Piers, thank you. A lot of folks have days off on Thursday and maybe Friday too for the Thanksgiving holiday. At least one suburban school's staff and students got an extra got an extra few days this week off due to a staffing shortage. It's emblematic of a wider issue in what educators say is a substitute teacher shortage. Amanda Venicky joins us now with more. Amanda. Yeah, Brandis, it wasn't originally on the school calendar, but Evanston Skokie District 65 is out all this week. Parents were notified in a letter Friday that even with subs and central office staff pitching in, schools couldn't safely operate, especially with pandemic guidelines. This decision was made both in the interest of safety and the mental health of our team. Superintendent wrote in that letter, based on numbers received today, we do not have adequate staffing or sub coverage to provide the necessary care or to support high quality learning next week. We believe this is a result of educators and support staff needing to rest and focus on mental health and also to tend to their own families. This is a sign of what president of the Illinois Association of Regional Superintendents of Schools, Mark Kleisner says, is an educator shortage statewide in schools that are rural, suburban, and Chicago. As one of my superintendents said, um, you know, Mark, I don't have enough teachers to fill classrooms, so I'm putting my paraprofessionals in the classrooms. And I don't have enough paraprofessionals to meet the needs of kids, so I'm putting substitutes in as paraprofessionals, which means I don't have enough substitutes, which means my administrative team is now substituting in classrooms. Data from the Illinois State Board of Education shows more than 4,000 unfilled positions in schools statewide, including more than 1,700 teaching posts this year. If there were more teachers, Kleisner says, there would be less of a stress on subs. It's not a new issue, but he says it has been exacerbated by the pandemic. Medical issues or fear or um, concern for one's own health or even political alignments um, lately, that's been a problem as well. Another issue, pay. Kleisner says that on average, subs make about $100 a day. It is more in CPS, about 180. But given licensure and what's needed to do the job, Michelle Gunderson says that's not enough. You can't treat substitutes as something on the back burner and then not realize that there's going to be a crisis. Uh, along the line. It has to be something that's treated as a priority. I talked to Gunderson this afternoon after she had substituted for a third grade class at the CPS school from which she retired. Our biggest resource really is our retired teachers. We know the children, we know the district, we're qualified, we already have our licensure. But when I retired, I did not receive a letter, an invitation, Please come sub for us. Here's how you do it. Gunderson, who is also a teacher's union leader, says that the district should be working to remove every barrier to make it easier to staff up, and that includes proactively reaching out to retirees. Some efforts have been made on that front. Retired CPS teachers can now do that more often without getting their pensions nicked, and the district offers a $420 bonus each month to those who take on at least a dozen teaching assignments within a 30-day period. Now that bonus is doing the trick, says Kathy Kanopasik. There were uh, 500, 600, 700. I even saw 900 openings one time. That really made a difference because now I see on the system, the online system that we're supposed to use, I see that there has been a reduction in the need for subs. Kanapasik is a retired CPS principal who last year filled in 115 days for a teacher, and she too subbed again today. But she's in her 60s and has some COVID vulnerabilities. She says some would be subs have fears going into the classroom, like health concerns. So it was scary, it, and, it, and it is still to some degree. And there's much going on where our teachers are feeling burnt out, our substitutes are feeling burnt out. Uh, I'm stopping subbing myself early in December. I'm not going to do the 12 days anymore. I appreciate the incentive, but I just can't. I can't keep up with it. I'm tired. I'm saddened by some of the things we see. 
There's also the issue of some per potential subs being reticent to pinch hit at schools. There's problematic situations, be it any potential violence or maybe a difficult principal. A substitute teacher will look at that on the screen and will decide not to go there. Now this becomes a racial issue too. And uh, a problem with the tale of two cities that we have in our school system, because in our tougher to staff schools, we've had a fill rate that's much less than in our schools with um, white students in them. CPS says it does not use teaching assistants to work as substitute teachers, and also that the district is making efforts, some of which kind of Pasek describes as valiant. For example, extra pay for those who take on assignments in those harder to staff or so-called incentive schools. Also, cadre subs who are sort of like permanent substitute teachers can now get health care. Kleisner, who is with that State Regional Superintendents Association, says that at a conference this weekend, there was a lot of talk about how to alleviate this sub shortage. A couple states in the country that have now allowed high school graduates who go through a training to be substitute teachers. And just frankly, in Illinois, we want to be really careful that we don't dilute the requirements to the point where we're eroding the, the level of quality. It may not be as easy of a job as you might assume. Think back, he says, to when you were in school and to a difficult time that subs may have had, perhaps because you gave them a difficult time, hopefully not. But Kleisner does say that there are a lot of ideas on this front, including working to spread the word to those who are looking for a flexible and meaningful work that you do not need a university teaching degree in order to work as a substitute teacher. Brenda, back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you.